What's up, everybody? Carrie Buck here. Just woke up. It's about 10 o'clock. Wednesday morning. I had so many. Look at that. And this is what my hair normally looks like. Except I put it this way. So this is my just woken up hair. <laughs> um, somebody said, hey, why don't you do a video of a day in the life of somebody uh, that you know, basically lives off the passive income. So I was like, you know what? It's going to be pretty boring, but this is going to be that day, guys. So let's go. I'm going to go into uh, my office. This is the, these are all my kids from before. This is Blady, Riley, Buggy, and these are all like foster uh, cats. This is my boy, Spency. <laughs> I already opened the blinds for the kitty cats. And, oops, I'll take you my office all right so now what I do uh, is I will check my ATMs right so when you own ATMs it's not like you have to physically go to the machine to check it right to see how much cash is in it um, there's some some processors have an app some have a website some have obviously they'll always have a website um, but some have an app so I'll just hop on to the website and I'll just check our ATM see how much cash is in them I normally will put it on um, like notepad and my, on my iPhone, but obviously you guys, I'm recording a video for you guys, so I'm just gonna write it on a crazy cat notes paper. Um, and I'm not even gonna write all of them down there because I know some of them are fine. So I'll usually just write, um, oh, they changed it. I recently moved a, an ATM and uh, yeah, um, they changed it in my system for me finally. All right, let's see. second and I'll also if you get my daily emails if I don't oh, I just, if I um, if I don't set the email up the night before or a few days before um, I will do it in the morning after I check my ATMs or before I check my ATMs um, this one I'm gonna actually do after I check the ATMs And people always ask me, who writes your emails? And I write them. I write them all. I write the good ones. I write the sucky ones. <laughs> I write the funny ones, the sad ones, whatever they are. It's me writing them. I'm almost done here. Like I said, I don't have to write all of them down because some of them... I have enough money in them. Um, and now I'll write the email, but I'm not gonna make you watch me write this email. All right, 1026. Now, I'm gonna go downstairs to make some breakfast. Uh, check my first pencil first. Don't mind my hand in the way. Hey, Spencer. What are you doing, babe? My wife looks like she's making something bad. What's up, bud? Good job with your breakfast, man. So, I'm gonna make some breakfast, and you're gonna see my wife making something bad as well. And you're also gonna see. A you got me a present? Oh my gosh, and that's probably gonna be bad, too. 
See, I'm trying to eat better, right? I need to lose 30, 30 pounds. I already lost probably like 30 pounds. And my wife is doing really good helping me. However, I was kind of bad last night. And when I'm bad, she's like, helps me be bad more sometimes. I hid your cookies. She did. I got these uh, lemon Girl Scout cookies, like this new kind she got for me. And um, she hid them for me. Happy house choice day. Happy house choice day. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're getting a new pool in the beach house. And um, she just got a really cute little, here, I'll let you see. At least it's not something I got to eat. <laughs> Was that a floaty? Yeah. A floaty for the pool. <laughs> Tomorrow we're making all the choices at our new, new uh, beach house. Um, all right, so. Thanks, babe. Um, so, I kind of eat different than, than most folks. I would imagine. I'm going to put you right here. Maybe you can see me. So, measure everything. Pans already clean. I pretty much eat eggs every single day. Normally, I'm doing this by myself, and she's not in here making a ruckus. Um, oh, shit. You guys have my app. I use an app called Lose It that, um... It's on my phone and it keeps track of everything I eat and how much of it I'm supposed to eat. But I've been eating the same thing all week, so I pretty much know what the stuff is. Um, but it's on my phone, so I can't look at it right now while I'm talking to you guys. Sorry, I had an uh, alarm. But I told this guy this was going to be a really boring video, but I'm making it for you guys. So, whoopsie beans in it. Let's drop all the freaking eggs on the floor. Dropping the fucking pepper on the floor. Okay. Not having a good morning so far, guys. Dropping shit. Alright. We get the five dozen shit. I'm gonna drop these eggs. We get the five dozen eggs from Walmart because I literally eat like two eggs every day. I got two eggs. Oh. Bacon. I forgot a veggie yesterday, almost. I'm gonna have this. This is what I had yesterday. Some of the yellow pepper. Are you making chocolate chip cookies? No. Why are you making chocolate chip cookies? It's kind of random. pretty much weigh everything. Also, pecans, Fisher pecans. I tried the Walmart pecans. They're freaking disgusting. I hate them. Do we have if, any walnuts in if it? If they take the bag. I don't think so. Almonds, pecans, macadamia nuts. Oh, they're not actually macadamia nuts, though. So. Never mind. Okay. Mmm, that would be delicious. I love chocolate cookies for walnuts. So now I can't really eat them right now, though. So I do 15 grams of pecans. So trust me on this. If you want pecans, get Fishers. Do not get the Walmart brand. And then, need a knife. grams of butter. I use curry gold. Full fat grass fed pure Irish butter. That's what I cook my uh, eggs in. I know a lot of people are like what do you mean? I thought you're trying to lose weight and I do a modified keto diet so it's high fat low carb and you know like medium protein or whatever. Put that in there. Up 
Okay. Now, I guess we can cut the pepper. You need to have veggies in every meal. But, you gotta be careful, pay attention to them because they do have carbs in them. So it takes your carbs up sometimes. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna cut some of this yellow pepper. This is a steak knife, not working very well. Alright. And you want to measure before you like wash it off and whatnot because it gets uh, water on it. Alright, so I measure it like that. Remember this for me? Oh, I'll have no video. 35 grams for the yellow pepper. And I don't really just eat it like that. You might think I put it in my eggs. I used to, but I make scrambled eggs now because I get bored when I have eggs a certain way every day. Um, but right now, I just take the pepper, cut it up, and put it on my plate, and I add blue cheese dressing to it. Yes, for breakfast. Okay. Now it's baking time. So either be 18 or 19 grams. Feel free to fast forward this, guys, but I'm telling you, this entire video is going to be boring as hell, right? I'm not some young kid, you know, doing some exciting shit. I'm a 45 year old married chick. <laughs> Can't really move to a beach house. I mean, I'm sure my video would be more exciting if I was at the beach house, right? Then you could watch me swim and shit. Um, but <laughs> it would be more exciting for me, but not yet. Or drown. I'm not, I wouldn't drown in my own pool. I'm not really, uh, a great swimmer or anything but i can swim in a pool or to potentially save my life or just yell for my wife <laughs> um so i got 19 grams of bacon and i'll just stick that in the microwave and i'm going to put on the whatchamacallit so the butter can melt You what? What did you say? She's singing some weird song and dancing. All right, so time for the eggs. And today, you're lucky. I'm gonna actually leave the house. So you'll get to see what I do on a random Wednesday. Last night was, I mean, yesterday was pretty cool because I, um, shit, I had, shit. I had um, called my coaching students to do weekly coaching accountability calls, 100 grams for eggs, and that was pretty awesome. I always love doing that. I guess he's got allergies acting up and whatnot. Eggs. I do the scramble thing right now until I get tired of that. But I also put sour cream and pico on top just to make it a little more exciting for me. Do you want to have a game today? Yeah. Where at? Valley Forge. Jeez. I'm like almost dropping everything today. Salt, pepper. Oh, bacon's done. I was thinking about going to Jay's game yesterday, but it was way, way too far away. So no can do with that. All right, thank you. Now we got 14 grams of butter all melted. And boom. Yeah, you know, video. <laughs> Thanks, man. And then, um, let's see, here's the bacon. Put that down on the plate. Ouch. Ouch. And I put all this stuff away. 
butter, a little pepper, bacon. Are you going to actually bake these or are you just going to eat them like that? Don't worry guys, I might edit some of this out because you don't want to watch me freaking make these scrambled eggs, so I imagine. That'd be really boring. What I'm going to do is this. While my eggs are cooking up a little bit, I'm going to go some water. i got to drink about, I'm supposed to drink 150 ounces a day, but I usually make it to 75 to... 100 ounces. So we got one of these. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can leave that right there. Got one of these machines here where cold water, room temp water, hot water. I need to do the room temp water. To, I'm going to fill the thing up. I got one of these because we were using um, so many um, you know, plastic water bottles. And I said to my wife, we need to stop using these because it's not good for the environment. It's not good for the animals. Ah, look at Spencer. Speak of an animal. Good boy. Um, it's just not good, right? So we bought one of these. This was like, I don't know, 150 bucks. And then we get, look at this. We just have three five-gallon jugs. Fill them up at Whole Foods. $5.35 for 15 gallons of water. Can't beat that shit. You can't beat that. Um, so that's how we drink our water now. No more plastic bottles. Cheap ass water. And it's just convenient. It's all good. All right, I'll be back and I'll show you my finished breakfast. Breakfast of champions. Now what I'll do, probably got my gas in that little piece of bacon was burnt. I already got, and see you coming. I already got my water in the living room. So I will sit down to eat my breakfast. And I will watch, I usually watch like a investigation discovery channel. I watch like Killing Time or See No Evil or something like that. Always makes me want to be like a detective or something to catch the bad guys, but uh, I prefer passive income over active income like that, especially that job. I don't really want to die. <laughs> um, so this is actually the living room. That's Kathy's dad. That's the camera. I got cameras all over the house. Oh, cameras all over the house. You would think for bad guys, but that too. But it's really, see, it's really for that guy right there. So I can see my Spencer. And you see that white camera right there? It's called a Furbo, best invention ever. It lets me throw him treats from wherever I am and I can see, like, I can, it's a camera, video camera too. Sometimes he'll be turned around and just looking at the Furbo waiting for me to throw him treats. All right, let me eat some food, I'll be back. All right, time for shower. I'll be out in the gif, guys, and then you guys are gonna go for a ride with me for. All right, so now we're leaving out the house. Don't mind that sound. It's just the alarm being set. You gonna come with me today? It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Oh shit, my stuff's on the floor. Go out to the, look at that, look at that trash can. We were cleaning out our garage. No fancy Lambo or Porsche here. <laughs> Look how dirty. Look how dirty. All this, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, pollen or I don't know what it is. But it's getting all over. Let's just wash it too. And then it gets over, all over the place. And my amazing wife cleaned out my car for me the other day. Um, alright. So, by the way, there's nothing wrong with 
Lambos or Porsches, you know what I mean? If that's what you're into, I'm just not into cars. Um, this is a Hyundai Sonata Sport. I love Sonatas. My last Sonata uh, got almost 300,000 miles and I sold it to one of Brandon, he's my oldest stepson, one of his friends who needed a car and just had a baby. And uh, sold to him for dirt cheap. And uh, he was so awesome that he even sent me a, a video or a pic when he reached 300,000 miles. Um, so, I mean, that car was amazing. Got 300,000 miles, well, 298,000 miles. Didn't hardly have any issues when I was getting inspections. Uh, I would need, like, a light bulbs. I mean, seriously, 300,000 miles almost, and all I would need is a light bulb. I mean, why would I not stick with the Sonata? You know what I mean? This was like a 20, this is a $20,000 car. Our other car is a Jeep. Uh, funny story about that. My wife always wanted uh, a Jeep. And one day she went into Walmart. And she had a Prius. She went into Walmart. And when she came out, there was the Jeep sitting in the parking spot she had parked her Prius in. Yours truly had come up with a little scheme. <laughs> so I used to work at a Jeep Dodge... Uh, whatever else kind of cars they are Chrysler dealer that's the, actually the place I got fired from in 2012 uh, but even though I got fired like I'm buddies like I'm, I'm friends with the person who fired me and my, my manager my boss like my boss like the owner every, I'm still friends with them right it, we even though I got fired it was I guess kind of on good terms you know what I mean uh, I mean it literally changed my life for the better but anyways um I went up to my old boss and I was like hey I need to get a Jeep for Kathy. So I would kind of pry at Kathy, be like, oh, what kind of color would you want? Like, what would you know? Yada, yada, yada. What kind of Jeep, you know? She always wanted a Wrangler. Um, so I worked out, you know, something with my old boss. And uh, Kathy and I went to Prius. I mean, went to Walmart in her Prius. And, of course, I'm texting my old boss. And, you know, the, my boss brought the Jeep around. And I ran out of Walmart. I told Kathy I'd be right back. I went to look at something. Ran out of Walmart. Pulled the Prius out of a spot. My old boss parked the Jeep in, gave me the keys. I went and moved the Prius and then went back in the Walmart like, Walmart like nothing happened. <laughs> and then Kathy comes out and she's like, where's my car? Uh, it was pretty fun. It was awesome. So uh, she got the Jeep that she's always wanted. And thankfully, she's so over the Jeep now. I don't know if any of you guys got Jeeps, but a Jeep Wrangler is so freaking uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. Um... And they were, I didn't realize how expensive they were. Like for something that's so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so she's over it. So after we buy the new house, we're going to get her a new car. Um, but I told her, I said, you know, you should always, uh, all, the car that you've always wanted, you should at least have it at some point. Right? Like I was, I always wanted a Mustang. Right? I wanted a 65 Mustang, but I, I've I realized like, it's not like you're going to get a 65 Mustang you know, in the 2000s or 1990s, that's like a decent car that you can drive all the time. Like it's a classic car, you know what I mean? Um, so in 1995, was it 95? Yeah, 95, I think I was 22. I bought a um, Mustang GT. I was 22 years old, bought a Mustang GT. And I liked it because the sides of it kind of looked like the 65 Mustang, right? So I've always wanted a Mustang. So when I was 22, I bought a, you know, brand new 1995 Mustang GT. And, uh, I was over that real quick, right? Because uh, I live in on the East Coast, right? We have winter, and that car sucked in the snow. It sucked in the rain. Like, it was literally just good when it was nice out, right? So I was totally over that car. But I kept it for 10 years until I got my uh, Hyundai Sonata. Um, so, again, you know, if, if your dream car is a Lambo or a Porsche or what have you, go for it. You know, some of us are just not car people right and I'd rather not spend my money on something like that but that's me right you if you're like that that's cool um but with that said when you're watching like all these videos and you got people driving Lambos and Porsches and yachts and this and that pay attention stay awoke some of those people are scam artists some of them are real if you watch them long enough you'll figure out which one are scam artists which ones are real you find out which ones are the bullshitters which ones are not, right? Now me, you'll never see me driving around a Lambo or a Porsche or something like that. Like, I'm always going to have a legit, pretty inexpensive car. I mean, I was going to say one day I might have a BMW. I used to work for them too, and I know they're amazing cars, but 
I don't know. I really just like the Sonata. You know what I mean? I, I don't even know if I'd even want a BMW. When I was getting this car, this car I'm in right now, it was between a BMW or this car. 100%. And I chose this car. You know? So I can't even say that I'd ever have a BMW. I, you know, I'm just not into it. Um, but, you know, again, if you're into cars and you've always wanted a really expensive car, that's go for it. I'm just saying be careful online. Right? You got these people driving around in cars. Probably ain't even theirs, right? Number one. Probably borrowed or rented, right? Number two. And they're trying to put off the impression that what they're trying to sell you is how they made the money for that. Not true. Right? So just stay awoke. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention. Um, I'm pretty. Uh, I'm a pretty simple person. You know, I, I don't need fancy cars. I don't need a fancy house. Yes, we're moving to the beach. Um, I was actually, Kathy and I were in bed last night and I said to her, I said, you realize that this house that we're buying is three times the price of our house we have now? She's like, yeah. And like, I'm not that, I'm just not that kind of person, but we've always wanted to live at the beach. We've always wanted to live in Rehoboth and we wanted a new house, a brand new house because our house here, even though it's not brand new, we legitimately, legit redid everything in the house like the inside of the house is brand new we got brand new roof brand new heating system brand new ac brand new bamboo floors throughout the entire house brand new kitchen brand new master bath brand new powder room um just everything you can think of is brand new in his house you know what i mean and uh so we're used to that now <laughs> and when we were looking at other houses at the beach we were looking at really inexpensive houses same price as this house or maybe twice the amount, you know, but, um, it's just, it's hard to go from something that has brand new everything to something that doesn't, you know, it was really hard. So that's why we, you know, kind of finally settled on new construction. Tomorrow we do our selections. I, sorry, I, I didn't uh, record earlier because I was talking to my best friend who moved and we haven't talked for a while. So I was kind of excited to talk to her. Um, but I had to go to the bank randomly on a Wednesday because tomorrow... Like I said, Kathy and I are doing selections for the new house. So I figured on the way home, we could just fill the strip club instead of making an extra trip because it will, will pass them on the way home from the new place. So that's what a, you know, why I'm making a random trip today to the bank. Um, normally during the week, I'm not really doing anything with the ATM business. Um, but right now, I'm on my way to the chiropractor. See you in a bit. All right, chiropractor time, guys. All done at the chiropractor. Getting in the car again. It's about, I don't even know what time it is. I think it's like three, uh, three something or other. Let's see. Three nineteen. Now I'm going to actually um, um, go get my hair cut. I'm going to go get my hair cut. And then after that, I don't actually have anything else planned for the day. So as you can see, pretty low-key day. Like there's, you know, I'm, I'm a 45-year-old married woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? With a soon-to-be 19-year-old stepson uh, who's in college and a... 27 year old stepson who lives out on his own, you know, so two cats nothing really exciting going on here um, No, I imagine though honestly when I move to the beach um, I'll, I'll be doing more stuff like I mean it'll be more exciting to me like I said, but probably not to you like I'm gonna get to pull more and uh, On the beach, you know walking the boardwalk and whatnot, but um Other than that, I mean I live, I live a pretty low-key life Nothing crazy or extravagant. Um, however, like, so, you know, back to, like, when I was talking about the car. Like, I don't like to spend a lot of money on a car. I'm just not a car person. If you are a car person, that's cool. If you want to spend a, money, a lot of money on a car, that's cool, right? Obviously, it costs more money for us to live at the beach than where we are now or even in the area we live, are in now. But that's what we've always wanted. You know, we always said that once the youngest graduated high school, we were making our way towards the beach, right? That's where we want to retire, you know? Um, so again, that's, it's, everybody has their own preference of what they value. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
and to be quite honest with you, 100% honest with you, I could live at the beach in a cheaper house. Like, oh, I mean, a really cheap house. That, that's just because I, I just could, you know? Um, but my wife had a good point as far as all the new, new stuff. And, you know, we just totally redid our house. And I was used to new, the new hardwood, new everything. And, you know, so was she. So I kind of understood the, uh, Sorry, that guy looked like a poker dealer, I knew. Uh, or I know, I should say. Um, so I understood, you know, my wife wanting new construction, which is fine. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. We deserve it. And anyway, we put in the work, you know, the hard work and, you know, everything. So it's cool. Um, but I'd be completely fine. Like, kind of like Warren Buffett, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be completely... Granted, I don't have his money. And that'd be amazing, right? But I'd be completely fine in, like, a house that was the same that we have are in now or even cheaper totally fine I, I wouldn't care you know I'm into um experiences like spending money on experiences do you know what I mean um you know like trips or and I, I'm not even really a big traveler right now because I I like to st spend time with my cat Spencer because he's older you know he's an older guy you know so I like to chill with him um, but you know, I do, you know, I do like to travel. Like we go on cruises and we go wherever, um, we go to Vegas to play poker. Um, or, you know, we'll pay like, um, like when we go to concerts, we'll always pay VIP or, or, you know, pay for the front row or, you know, pay to, um, you know, meet whoever we're seeing. I mean, we paid, you know, I mean, uh, we paid six grand to, to sit in the front for Michelle Obama and to meet Michelle Obama, you know what I mean? And Grant, of course, you know, if you're not into Michelle Obama, it doesn't even matter. That's not even the point, right? Um, you know, if you wanted to pay six grand to meet Trump or whomever, right? It's it's whoever you want to meet, whoever you want to share that experience with, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I spend my money on, experiences, you know, and I'm okay with that. Um, there's just certain things, like, this is something, this is, this is just typical me, right? Um, we just went to see the end game the other night and it was just totally random. We kind of like an impromptu date night. Right. And we just walked in and it was the 3d. The only one that has seats was the 3d version. It was like five o'clock, I think. And it was 3250 for two seats. And I'm like 3250. That's nuts. Right? I mean, granted, I paid it because my wife wanted to see it, and, you know, I was fine seeing it, too, but that is, like, crazy to me, like, paying 32 bucks to see a movie, you know what I mean? But here, I'll pay six grand to go see Michelle Obama. You know, it really just is perspective and, you know, what you value and what experience you want to share. By the way, the movie was great. I wouldn't say it was worth 32 50 but it was definitely worth a normal movie price, <laughs> um, and the three hours flew by. Um, anyway, so... You know, I'm into investing, right? So I'd rather, um, you know, invest my money into something that another passive income stream that's going to pay me money that I can buy these experiences with, or I can buy the next car with, or I can buy whatever. Like, well, our cars, our passive income pays for it, right? The house, passive, all of our bills are paid by passive income, right? Guys, that is financial freedom. You do not have to be a millionaire or a billionaire or a billionaire when your passive income exceeds your finances. I mean, when your passive income exceeds your expenses, you are financially free. You now have choice in life. Okay. Um, all right. So listen, I got to get off here because I got to run to the hairdresser now and I'll be back. Haircut. All done. Sometimes she cuts it too short. But I'm excited because I just found out that the other hairdresser, the lady that owns the shop, she actually does Kathy's hair. She is going to actually come down to the beach every, I think it's every month, like every four weeks. I forget how often Kathy gets her hair cut. Um, but she's going to come down every, like, let's say, four or five weeks to cut both her hair. <laughs> um, so I'm excited about that because obviously she's going to, it's going to be like a little mini vacay for her you know she said during the not during the summer but during the rest of the uh months she would come down on a monday stay like a day or two cut both her hair but during the summer she says she's gonna just come cut the hair and leave because she doesn't want to deal with the traffic but she's pretty awesome she's really nice she's a friend of ours but um 
Now I have to do something unexpected. I got a notification about one of our ATMs that it is low as $480 in it. And that will not last till Thursday. I mean, that will not last till Friday because tomorrow is Thursday. I don't know when you're watching this, but tomorrow, May 2nd, is Thursday. And that's when we have to do our selections for our new house. So I won't be able to fill anybody tomorrow. So I got to do a little audible right now and go fill that machine. And then apparently I will be helping my sister-in-law paint her rental property tonight. <laughs> she's got a tenant that uh, she's throwing out or she threw out. And apparently the place needs some paint. So uh, Kathy said she would go and help her paint. And, you know, I, I volunteered too. So apparently that's what I'll be doing this evening. What up? I just got you sitting here for one second. Why I... Why I get some money put into this spot real quick. I'm just going to throw 2000 in there. Normally that's what I give them for a week. But they got a little bit of money in them already. So this, is, this should probably give them enough until next week. I don't have to fill them on uh, Friday. Uh, and it so happens that this area where I'm at, this is a barber shop. Um, there's another barber shop and two other locations. So I just might as well just fill them all since I'm here so I don't have to come back. Uh, so I will be back when I'm done. Ciao. All right. So I. Just loaded two machines, both barber shops. Uh, the one little restaurant was closed, which I know it would be. It closes like three o'clock every day. Um, and the other place was fine. Um, remember, in the morning, I have my little um, notepad where I print, you know, I put in there how much cash is in each machine. So I checked that out and I saw the other location was fine. It'll be totally fine until Friday. Maybe even next week, to be honest. Um, so I'm done working <laughs> for today um i'm out of breath man that's horrible I, I didn't walk that far but i walked fast to get in my car um but i'm done working for today and i'm going to go home now eat some dinner it's about 505 i work for probably 10 minutes <laughs> filling those machines and that was just completely random I did not expect to do that I got that notification that the one machine was low um, and you when you start your own ATM business you'll get the same notifications you just got to set them up um, so an expected quote-unquote ATM work for 10 minutes but it's all good um, now I don't have to come back here uh, later in a week to fill these machines I will see you soon so I'm all dressed to paint but I have to eat dinner. I went and stopped at the store to get some pepperoni slices to have for dinner. But my amazing wife made me a steak for dinner. And my favorite, Brussels sprouts. So I'm just measuring this stuff up. Getting it all, getting a plate on. Babe, this fork, did you use it with the raw meat or the cooked meat? Getting it all situated on this plate. Now let's see, put some Brussels sprouts on here. Remember, you always gotta have a veggie. Yes. I love me some sprouts. Alright, let's see. I don't know where to put my phone. Oh. You guys got my phone. Alright, I gotta shut you all off so I can put this in my thing and make sure all my macros. Or good. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Got another notification for an ATM that's low. It's it's our highest volume ATM. I'll put a link up there to a video I did about it. So we're gonna fill that real quick because it's literally 15 seconds from our house, a minute from our house. So we're gonna fill that real quick before we go to paint. It's about 6:49 p.m. So we just got done filling that machine. I remember it takes like 30 to 60 seconds to fill an ATM machine. But while we were in there, the customer came up to us and asked us the question, 
And uh, of course I inquired about why is he asking this question? It was uh, about do these use work off the internet or something like that. And it turns out he owns a barber shop down the street. <laughs> so we started talking, we got his card and we're gonna call him on Friday and meet up with him on Friday and potentially put an ATM in there. I know you're thinking, but you're moving to the beach. Yeah, we are. But um, if it does really well, we'll leave it because we're leaving the Chinese restaurant that we just filled because it is our best machine. Um, and also we got a machine that kind of sucks. That's a, a little bit further from us that we will just move that and put it here anyway for the next six to eight months. It would be better than where it's at. So always have a conversation with folks. You never know when it could be new business. Talk to you soon about the paint a house. Hello, back from painting. Sucked. I'm such a horrible painter. I don't know why anybody asked me to paint, but it's about 10, 10, 20, 10, 30. And I know we don't go to bed this early, but we got early day tomorrow, so I'm getting ready to go to bed. But this was a day in the life of a passive, passive income order. Nothing really too exciting right now. But somebody asked, so there you go. Remember, if you'd like to learn about the ATM business and you'd like me to help you, I'd be happy to help you. Save time, money, and um, headaches. Go to atmbusinessblueprint.com. Then once you enter your email on the next page, it's like a 28-minute video explaining all about my hybrid ATM investing system. Um, watch that. You'll learn a ton. And then if you want my help, Fill out the application, set up a call with one of my team members, and uh, mm -hmm. go over your goals. And if you're fit for one of the trainings, awesome. If not, I still wish you luck. Alright, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great night, and may you live happily off of passive income.